Beloved, thank you very much for joining us one more time. This is Christian Focus, your daily or weekly debut that brings you the whole news or whole content about your Christian life. Now, we speak directly into your hearts, and of course, your life is not the same again. Okay, welcome back from the week that was. Some of you were sick in the week, but I know for sure that God has healed you. Some of you have gone through very difficult challenges. You have lost uh, beloved ones. Some of you don't have employment, but I'm here to let you know that God has not forgotten you. He's that silent friend at every moment of your life. So you lose Look at him, call on him because the Bible says that I am at the door and knocking. And if you can hear me knock and open the door. So he's just waiting for you to just open up to him and it will take all that anxiety. It will take all the sorrow. It will take all the sickness. He will take everything that is being weighing you down. And I know for sure that today God is going to speak to your life and your life is not going to be the same again. But of course... In the week, there are people that have gotten some good news. You got a scientific wedding, so someone married you, someone proposed to you, someone uh, you're celebrating your birthday, you got a new job, you started a new business, you bought a new car, you started uh, a new house project. I want to celebrate with you, and I know for sure that if it was not by God's grace, you will not go that far. So walk tall, but remember, all the praise goes back to him. Today on Christian Focus, I'm hosting a wonderful man of God, a role model, a man that is looked at from all corners of life. He has walked and traveled all around the world. And the only good thing that he says, I have gone speaking the word of God. Today he's based in Mukono and he's none other than Pastor Samuel Kawumi. My namesake, you know, and I'm so delighted that my namesake is right here to speak to you about words that are going to change your life. Now today we're talking about the role of the church in transformation of the society or Africa. We are living in times of COVID-19 where everything seems to be devastated. You know, everything seems to be hitting a dead end. Society is disturbed. Family is disturbed. You need a word that comes from God. And uh, Pastor Samuel is going to be talking to us about how the church, after this whole thing is done, how is the church going to help in the transformation of Africa or the transformation of of society. Before then, let's do a word of wisdom right here on Christian Focus with myself, Big Sam. Well, our word of wisdom today for all of you folks that have just tuned in. Success seems not to be connected with actions. Success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes but don't quit. Let me say it again. Success seems to be connected with action. There is no separation between success and action. Everything that does not have action is not successful. If you want to be successful, you need to have some action. People that just dream and don't put action in whatever they have dreamt, they will be good dreamers who are not advancing. Success cannot be separated from action. Listen to this. Successful people keep moving. No matter what the cost, you keep going, you keep moving. You know how many people have failed in life? But because they did not count failure upon their lives, they are successful. You keep on looking at them and saying, I want to be like so-and-so. I want to achieve just like so-and-so. Those people, if you get a moment and look at them and sit them down and they tell you where they have come from, they have failed one way or the other. But they did not put failure on top of their list. They have kept the vibe. They have kept the move. They keep the momentum. They don't change until they become successful. They make mistakes, but don't quit. Winners don't quit. Ladies and gentlemen, in this season, there's quite a lot that is happening in our lives. And I'm telling you right now that your business has hit a dead end. Your family, dead end. Your business, your school, churches, a dead end. And this is when we need to prove 
that you were sent by God. This is when we need to prove that you are an apostle from God. This is when you, we, we need to prove that you are a pastor who was commissioned by God. That after this lockdown, you are going to stand still and say, it is God. You know, some of us are going to change our language and we're going to speak money. <laughs> you know, but I'm telling you right now that if you want to be successful, you need to get some action into your life and don't give up. That's our word of wisdom right here on Christian Focus. One more time, I just want to thank you so much for choosing to watch UBC, your number one broadcast, and of course, watching a Christian Focus with myself, Big Sam. Today, I have already made mention that I'm hosting a wonderful man, a father figure, a man that has gone through it all and it still stands to say one thing, there is success at the end of the tunnel. You know, I love it when the Bible says that when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't say when you stop in the valley of the death, you know. So this man I'm about to introduce to you has seen it all. He has gone through it all, not only in Uganda, but even out of Uganda. He has taken the gospel to various places in the whole world, you know, and he's going to be speaking to us how we, the church can get in the vibe of transformation of the communities in Africa at large. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me or join me and we welcome Pastor Samuel Kaumi on my show. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, 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 I have spoken a lot about you. Yes, yes, you have. Very generous of you. Thank you. And first of all, I just want to apologize to everybody watching us right now. I know it is a rule right now that we should be putting on face masks, but I've already told my guest here not to put on a face mask because we want him to be uh, to be audible enough so that you can hear him. So that's the reason that we had to put on the uh, put off the face masks. Pastor Samuel, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. God thank has you blessed you me. in Mukono. Yes. And I know that God is doing a lot of good works in Mukono. God is doing wonderful things in Mukono. Mukono nah. was known for all sorts of negative things, but it's a good place. Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I know there's quite a lot that we, we can, can read say, about Mukono. We say the hand of God is in Mukono. That's wonderful. That's, That's why God, God has put people that has got his hand in Mukono, just yes. like you. Amen. Who is Pastor Samuel Kaumi? Well, um, I'm a father and a husband. I'm also a pastor of uh, Blessed Christian Church, uh, which is situated in Upper Kauga in Mukono. Mm -hmm. um, I have dedicated myself to uh, raising leaders. That's my passion and my commitment. I have um, I'm a, a consultant. I get involved in business as well. Yeah, but my primary vocation for now is the ministry. Now, now I, I was re reading your profile, and, and I saw it that was so interesting. A business consultant, someone who is so much into business, and that's that's your major. That's where you started. That's what you you did at uh, uh, in your school life. You know, how do you balance your 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 business because you're still a consultant up to today and ministry. Well, um, if I just briefly just stated that uh, I started my work life with World Vision okay. and worked also as executive director for Sender Cow. And um, I always have considered priorities an important thing. And so I have prioritized uh, ministry, I've prioritized my relationship with God. And that was my experience throughout my work life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so sometimes we get it wrong when we don't have priorities. But yeah. yes, I prioritize my family, I prioritize the ministry, I prioritize the relationship with God. And um, yeah, so um, they are serving God. Now, I, I, I've also got to understand that you're a very well-traveled man. God sent you out of Uganda to go and take the gospel to India. Tell me about that. Well, during my student life, I was a, a student in India. I did my bachelor's and master's in India and uh, returned uh, home in 97 and uh, got involved in work life. Pastor, pastor actually right in 1997 and I uh, have been at it for the last number of years. And wow. I thank God for the honor of serving him. 
Tell me about your family, and we just want to stop it right there. <laughs> I am a father of uh, six. I have five girls, and in African setting, I'm supposed to be uh, very fortunate, and I have uh, one one son, and um, we live in Mukono. Uh, we serve God together in Mukono. Okay, that's good. And what's the name of your, your beautiful wife? Yes, I'm married to Anne. Anne, Anne is uh, my beautiful wife. And uh, we have, like I said, six uh, girls and one boy. And um, the Lord has kept us well in Mukono. We want to celebrate you, Anne, wherever you are. You're watching us right now. Thank you so much for standing behind this wonderful man to do the assignment that God has put on his, uh, on his head. Now, Pastor Samuel, we want to go straight into what God has put on your heart. And we talk, want to talk about the role of the church in the transformation of society or Africa. Uh, and, 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 and that's a big topic. That's a verse topic. I don't even know how you're going to do that. But you have your time starting right now. Tell us, what is the role? Or how should we term the role of church? Because we have seen lots of churches that uh, they are in communities, but they're in communities to drain the communities. You know, what should be the right role of the church in the community? Big Sam, thank you first of all for the privilege and honor to be on this program. I am considered a privilege to be here and I want to thank you. Um, I believe that Africa is at the brink of a revolution. Mm. I believe that uh, as I uh, reflecting on this, Africa is at the verge of what I would call a quantum leap. Mm. Africa is at that point where it's about to experience a massive transformation. And I personally believe that the church has a significant role to play in the transformation of Africa, in aiding the coming about of this leap, yes, sir. Yes, sir. this transformation, and also in ensuring that this transformation is sustainable. Mm. It is one thing to get something started, but another thing to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the problems we have both in the church setting and um, in development activity, I've been involved in dev development work, is that we have initiatives that are not sustainable. Mm -hmm. I believe that the church has a significant role in ensuring that uh, the transformation of Africa is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Not only have it get started, but also get it to persist and continue for a long duration. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, the church in the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 mm -hmm. is described as the pillar and the ground of truth. Mm -hmm. You see, as a pillar, the pillar would represent stability. The pillar would represent uh, basis. Mm. The pillar would represent um, firmness. And so the church is a pillar and a ground, the word of God says, a ground of truth. Now, truth, Jesus described himself as the way and the truth. Truth is essential because truth supersedes fact. Truth supersedes um, the this, this status quo. Truth refers to the will of God, mm. the passion of God, the desire mm. of God. Mm. Now God has a good plan for Africa, as indeed he has a good plan for every society. And um, the church therefore that ideally should know the heart of God, the will of God, the purpose of God, has a role to play in bringing truth to being, bringing truth to people, helping people to understand what's the will of God, what's the desire of God, what's the purpose of God. And I want to say at the onset that the will of God and the purpose of God for Africa and for society as a whole is good. God is a good God and his purpose for Africa and for society is good. His will is to prosper society. Poverty is not the will of God. Pain and misery, war and bloodshed are not the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. And so the church has an important role, particularly in bringing to the world 
and to society, and to Africa for this matter, a value system. Mm -hmm. You see, everything begins off on beliefs. Mm -hmm. What are our beliefs? What are the beliefs in society? Africa has believed a lie. Africa has embraced uh, a negative reality, a, a perception that we can't. We cannot become better. We, are not, uh, uh, we have been relegated to the back seat. Uh, there is nothing good in Africa. Africa is, um, uh, is poor, is depraved. They cannot lead themselves. They cannot govern themselves. Nothing good can come out of Africa. And I'm saying that that is a negative perception that we as Africans have embraced. We as societies have embraced. I'll just say this possibly as well. Um, I worked for Sendakao, yes. and um, while at Sendakao, uh, we were known for, we were known negative, uh, well, not really negatively, they were th we were thought to just distribute cows. But our role was much more than that. We were in communities for training. And I'll never forget a statement that uh, has lived with me in my time with, with the, that organization. Hearing women in the community saying, I am no longer afraid of poverty. And what was the reason? They said, I've, I've received knowledge and skills. Mm. So knowledge and skills will help people out of the bondage, the limitations that we have come to uh, really embrace as Africans. I believe that the church has a role of helping Africa to develop the right belief systems, the confidence, the fact that we can, the truth that God has a good plan for us, um, the belief that Africa is good, that Africa is wealthy, that Africa has got promise, has got a future, the truth that Africa can become better. Uh, I believe that the information age in which we are right now the wealth that Africa has, both in terms of natural resources and um, the people, Africa has tremendous potential. And as I said at the start, I believe that Africa is at the brink of a breakthrough. Mm. The church has a role to play in ensuring that Africa not only has the right belief system, but the right value system, the right values. Uh, and with the right values, the right attitude. With the right attitude, then the right actions, the right behavior, the right decision making. We'll have the right decision making in our corporate boards. We'll have the right decision making in our businesses. We'll have the right decision made in governance or in government, in the media, because all these are spheres of influence. We know of seven spheres of influence. We know of uh, family is a major sphere of influence because in the family system, um, children develop their basic value process. Then you come to culture, our cultures. Uh, you come to uh, governance or government. You have education, you have uh, media, you have arts and sports. All these are important um, uh, influence areas which the church has a significant opportunity to influence. I believe that the church needs to rise up. I believe that we need to play an important role in establishing um, leadership in the church, helping our leaders to understand that our role supersedes uh, our engagement in the four walls of the church. The four walls of the church are precious and important for worship, for fueling or developing the Christians within there. But then, our, you know, once the Christians have come and have been ministered to and have been blessed and challenged, their real role and activity, their mission, and their place of influence is out there in what we have called or termed the marketplace, out there in the community. And so, we as a church have a tremendous privilege and opportunity to receive people in our midst, 
empower them, train them, equip them, and then send them out as grounds, as pillars of truth. But also there's a mandate, there's a responsibility that the Lord, the Word of God uh, gives to us. Yes. In the book of Matthew 5 and verse 14 through verse 17, it says, really at the end of verse 15, verse 16, it says, that let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works mm. and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Mm. So Africa and um, the church for that matter has the duty of empowering uh, the believers, Christians, and for that matter, the community at mm. large, mm. to shine, to reflect the glory of God and the purposes of God. Now, I said that um, Africa has a role in empowering and transforming the value system of the communities in which we live. Yeah. But you see, the other thing is also proclaiming hope. The, the message of the gospel is a message of hope. The church is about hope. You know, uh, the church is about hope. Mm. In the world, Jesus said you will suffer tribulation. So the world is about challenges and hardships. But the gospel is about hope. It's about life. Yes, it's about assurance. So the church has the duty of bringing hope to Africa, lightening the lives of Africans to help them know that we can. We can have a better future. Okay? With the right value system, the right belief system, the right value system, the right attitudes, and then the right actions. And um, uh, we, I believe that we'll be able to see a better Africa. Africa. The church has a duty as well of teaching, of training, of equipping, of instilling you know, uh, the right things, as I mentioned, value systems. Mm. But also discipling. You see, Matthew 28 states that uh, Jesus giving his um, final instruction, really, what we have come to know as the Great Commission, mm. he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And you see, for a long time we have limited discipleship to what we do on a one-on-one -on -one basis with individuals mm. that are within the church. Mm. Discipleship is really much larger than that. And uh, he has stated that the mandate is concerning nations. Go and disciple all nations. Okay? So the outlook of the church should not be the four corners of the world, of the church, but the nation. Mm. What does the nation believe? What are the value systems of the nation? What is the outlook of the people? What is the perception of the community? You see, if you look at uh, the challenge we have now, uh, we have societal challenges, really societal problems. It's no longer um, uh, just a, as some people would want to suggest, it's a leadership issue we're having a problem with, um, we possibly are having a problem with this and the other. But you see, well, if you go right to the fabric of our society today, you find that corruption has become endemic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, greed, uh, self-interest, uh, if you go into our morality, okay? These are all things that the church has the opportunity to influence for good. And uh, so my appeal, really, my appeal, my personal sense of call and mission is to leadership. God is interested in leaders. Because everything begins and ends with leaders. If we have the right leaders, and I'm not talking just in the sense of political leadership, mm -hmm. I'm talking right from church leadership. Mm -hmm. When you have the right church leadership, and the church leadership that is envisioned with the right vision, with the right set of values, then we shall have the right leadership in our societies. Then we shall have the right leadership in the communities, and eventually as well in our, um, uh, what you'd call, our political leaders, but mm -hmm. not just political leaders. We have leaders in the corporate world, mm -hmm. leaders in business, leaders in, in the corporate boards. What are their value systems? What do they believe in? You see, if, if, if someone seated in the corporate board is thinking just about themselves, then Africa is in trouble. But if they are thinking about the good of others, 
then we have a hope for Africa. I was just thinking about uh, the commandments that the Lord has given. Mm. The Ten Commandments, uh, among other things, describe um, shall not steal, shall not kill, uh, shall not commit adultery. And I think, just thinking about just those three, think about a society that believes in not stealing. Mm. Think about a society where they don't covet their neighbor's goods, where they don't look out for yes, their neighbor's sir. wife. Think about such a society. Mm, mm. So when God thought about Israel as a society, he gave them laws for their good. Jesus, on the other side, on the other hand, in the New Testament, speaks to us about love your neighbor as you love your own self. Think about a society where we love our nation, where we love our brethren, where we love our community, where we love each other, then we'll not steal, mm -hmm. then we'll not commit adultery, mm -hmm. then we'll not seek to offend others, mm -hmm. then we'll not be given to murder and uh, you know, every negative thing that we witness in our communities. The church has a role to play. Well, beloved, I know that uh, our time is first print, but for those of you that have just joined us, uh, this is uh, a moment that we are having with Pastor Sam right here. And we're talking about the role of the church in our communities in Africa as, at large, you know. And I love him saying he's so passionate about Africa and he's thinking, no, Africa, we have it all, you know, and we are on the brim of just making it if we just only change our mindset and, you know, do things right. And, and, and out of whatever that you said, Pastor Sam, uh, I just want to have about three questions. In, in, in. And number one, you said Africa has believed a lie. What is the lie? Number two, how can the church help the community when the church needs help? <laughs> we, we have a lot of pastors who are crying. We have a lot of churches that are in debt. How can the church help the community when the church needs help? We have a lot of pastors fighting against themselves. You know, the church needs help in order for the, for the church to help the community. You know, the, the community has got uh, educated people. And the church has got leaders who are not educated. They don't even want to go to theological colleges. They don't even want to sit and be uh, schooled, but they want to transform communities. Now, I've got a big question there, and the last one is, should the church be involved in politics? Because you say God is interested in good leadership, and if our leaders in churches are good, uh, then that means uh, the whole country or the, the, the villages will have leadership that is good. Now, is the church, should the church be involved in politics? Because, I mean, I'm actually asking it around the same right time when Uganda is getting ready uh, to get, get into polls and, you know, there's vibe going on. Should the church back out? Is it right for a pastor or a minister in church to get engaged in politics? Those are three questions, and I know uh, someone at home would want uh, answers for that. Great questions, uh, Big Sam. I, I appreciate those questions. Starting with the last question. Yes. Um, I believe that Africa, I, mean, I believe that the church has a role to play in politics. And the starting point is in raising leaders, oh, right. in impacting their value system, mm -hmm. and in challenging them about their role when they go out into it. You see, when politicians go out into their work, <clears throat> and in serving, in really, in what they're supposed to be doing is serving the, their community. There are so many pressures that they face. So many of our politicians, and let me go back and state them as Christians, yes. if we don't establish them and help them to mature in character, mm. see, because the values of justice and wow. responsibility mm. and hard work mm. and um, fairness mm. and um, the good of the community. Yeah. Those are things that should be instilled in church. Okay. We okay. should be able to influence the thought process of not only our pr political class, but also our corporate leaders, people in the corporate board, those who are going to be heading our banks and heading corporations. 
what are their value systems? I believe that everything is really about the value process. Okay. So, what's our role and contribution in relation to politics? Yes. That's raise, it. Raise that's it. Leader. That's a good raise one. A the, 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 there was another one. How can the church help the community when the church needs help? I think we have, the church needs a paradigm shift. The church has looked at itself as needing help as against giving help. Okay. I think we need to change the tables. I believe that the church is a source of strength for the community. Right. Starting from, as I have uh, emphasized, the value process, if the church, if, if uh, the believers are helped to have the right mindset, to understand their role in the society and in community, they look at church in a different way. Um, the church is supposed to be a strength to the community. It's supposed to be a source of blessing to the community as against just, you know, a dependent. Church is not supposed to be a dependent. It's supposed to be a strength and an aid. Okay? That's my conviction. So we need a paradigm shift in the church. All right. And the first question was, Africa has believed a lie. Yes. What is the lie? That Africa is a dark, depraved, incapable set of people, that Africa cannot, that Africa cannot rise, that Africa cannot be better. We have believed a lie. Is that the reason why our brothers and sisters are struggling at visa offices to get away from Uganda? Go. Is that because we have believed that there is nothing good here? Absolutely, absolutely. We believe that uh, everything best will be found out of Africa. Beloved, I know our time is past paid. My producer is telling me, hey, man, you need to close this program. This is when it gets to be so interesting. I told you, this man is a fountain of wisdom. Pastor Samuel, someone is watching us right now. They want to know how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find you? What is your social media platform? How can they get more of you? Thank you. Um, we are best in Mokono. And um, on our social media sites, you can find us on Blessed Christian Church, uh, Mukono, and that's on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel, that's BCC Mukono. Uh, we run a weekly Bible study um, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. We've been talking about maturity, and that would be a wonderful opportunity for you, you to join us. Um, my personal line, uh, if, if that's needed, uh, is uh, 0 quadra 7 3 9 uh, 7 double 6. And um, we are best in Mukono, Upper Kauga. You can reach us at our church office and we'll be honored to receive you. Now, now you run a Bible study every Tuesday and Thursday. Yes. Uh, that's at 6 p.m. Is that online? That's online. Online. It, yes. Facebook and YouTube every week. Every week. Yes. All right. Please give us that number one more time. Uh, for YouTube, that's BCC Mukono. Yes. And on Facebook, that is Blessed Christian Church yes. Mukono. All right. Man, man, thank you so much. Um, I feel so delighted. I want to host you again. Definitely. I want to say thank you very much, our human resource manager, who made sure that we have this wonderful uh, spring of wisdom to many of us. Thank you very much, uh, our UBC human resource uh, manager, for uh, sc scooping up wisdom to give to the whole world. And for those of you that are watching us right now and you want to be part of this wonderful program, please, our contacts are right there. You can give us a call. You can give me personally a call on 0759-415959. And we see what God has put in your life that can benefit someone out there. I know for sure that we have a lot that God has given us to give other people out there. Pastor Samuel, please, when you go back home, tell your wife that we appreciate. I would love to come and, 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 and just you. be at your church and just sit there and hear what God is saying. And I, know, I know your flock must be so happy about you. And I want to thank them in Mukono for allowing you to come and share your time with us. Thank you, Big Sam. I want to host you again. That should be on your calendar. It'd be an honor. Because this is not finished. 
Absolutely. You came with a lot to talk and just our time is just far spent. <laughs> Beloved, thank you so very much. I know that you have been blessed and God is doing some wonderful work in your life. Pastor Samuel has got a lot to talk about. Our time is just fast paint. Keep watching UBC because there's quite a lot of good programming right after my program. And remember, we are still fighting the coronavirus away from Uganda or away from everybody that is in, uh, on earth. So keep the social distance. Put on a face mask. Don't go anywhere where it's crowded. If you do that, make sure you sanitize. Make sure you have your mask on. Keep uh, the guidelines of Ministry of Health and your life is not going to be affected. Remember, this program airs every Sunday at 7.30. If it's about Christian focus, we touch those issues that pertain to Christian fraternity. From me, Big Sam, Patrick, Nora, the rest of the team right here, we just want to wish you a wonderful week. May God bless you. Catch you again next time. Big Sam saying bye-bye.